we're talking about transitioning. Pretty big topic, very, 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 very. This is a show all for LGBTI youth. Specifically today we'll be talking about the T and what it is to be transitioning, especially for a trans youth. Uh, we'll be talking about everything from what it is like to go through the transition process to what it's like to come out at the end. And I am really lucky to be blessed with a fine panel of youth with me today, like Sim, Ashley and Star Lady. Uh, but before we get into it, uh, Ash, I've been eyeing off your ink for this whole time. Um, this is beautiful. How long have you had that for? Um, I've had it for about uh, maybe a month and a half now. And um, I got it, I always wanted a tattoo and I just sort of wanted something that had real meaning to me. So I finally decided, um, um, after seeing the autumn leaves this year, I thought that I'd use them to represent the transition um, through sort of regeneration from um, death to life and move through the colors of the seasons. That's beautiful, and, and yeah, it's a, a tattoo that you can show off. I've got a, a fair few tattoos, but uh, they're not for showing off purposes, or well, mm -hmm. at least not on this capacity. And Starlight, I'm loving the accessories. Well, and you've got yourself some ink too. Yeah, I've got I've got lots of tattoos all up and down my arm. Yeah, can we yeah. can we get can we have a gaze? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. nice, we've got a full them. sleeve. They're all a bit sort of interstellar, but there's me dancing. Yeah. Coming down from outer space. Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my lucky star. It helps me find my way. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and Sim, do you have any ink? Oh, I'm going to get some in a month, uh, like a night on my chest with this special heart on it. Yeah, I'm really excited, but I don't have any tattoos yet. <laughs> oh, well, at least there's, we've got the yet. Now, we were talking a little bit earlier on back in the, uh, back in the green room just about uh, awkward photos and uh, awkward taggings on Facebook and social medias. Now, have you been involved in any, any tagging, Star Lady? Yeah, um, last summer I went along to Tropical Fruits Party and I work with a lot of uh, Indigenous youth and families in a professional capacity and my Facebook page is sort of, it's like a public one. And I did this, it was for a sexual health promotion which is at, you know which is which is really important which is really fantastic but you know it was in context it was at you know sort of a radical queer party and I was like woohoo and so they had this big sort of billboard that was like Tom of Finland with a giant penis and there was me <laughs> sort of next uh, grabbing onto the giant penis and then it went up on my <laughs> Facebook page and I was like oh my god delete delete that is the worst <laughs> so we are here to discuss what it is to to be a transgendered person or to go through that the trans process uh, Sim, you are a part of Y Gender, which is a support group for uh, trans and uh, genderqueer, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's a group um, for transgender young people, genderqueer people, gender fluid. It's about <laughs> gender and, um, yeah, a place where people are questioning, can come and ask questions, there's events. I just have um, a, a quick question. You just said uh, gender queer and gender fluid. What could you confirm or like uh, tell me what those are? The differences? Oh, the sort of. Um, well, we have a culture that sort of, uh, you know, says there's male, there's female, and that's the only um, sort of thing there is. Like that's the gender binary. But really, there's all sorts of gender identities, and no one fits fully into male and fully into female and for the people sort of most between that binary um, at least for a little while um, pre-transition or if that's just who they are it's a social support group because um, we we come up with issues in our lives since this is the sort of culture and society we live in Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's an amazing uh, support yeah. group to be a part of. So, Ashley, you uh, had a wealth of support uh, and someone who also went through the transitioning process, who was quite close to you. Now, uh, could you tell uh, me about that? Well, I've uh, quite a unique story. I actually have a parent who's also transgendered. Um, my father transitioned to living in, as a female when I was 16 years of age. And um, 
yeah, it was, it was great to have someone there to be able to, to come out to and, and feel comfortable and sort of leading in the right direction with support groups and that, that sort of thing. And um, I mean, it took another 10 years after she uh, came out for me to come out, but yeah, it, yeah it, was, it was amazing to have that support and have that ongoing support now. Did you, what was it like when you actually sat down? Like, were there, were there any nerves when you were talking to your dad about, uh, I guess, your own gender identity? I think so, because um, just the place that Canberra was, where, where I grew up, it, um, being, being transgendered and um, sort of being a male and expressing femininity wasn't seen as something that, yeah, it wasn't seen as something that you could really be proud of. So, yeah, um, and I um, spent a decade sort of doing really well to hide it. So. Well, I think it's fantastic now that you don't actually have to hide it and that you mm. can be, you know, the person that you've wanted to be better, you know, later rather than you know, never at all, which is something fantastic. Now, Star Lady, you hold fashion shows and you teach fashion classes and uh, a, a wealth of support I up north in uh, Northern Territory. Do you care to tell me about some of the work that you do with uh, Indigenous youth? Well, um... In particular, I mean, I'm doing I'm doing fashion, hairdressing, beauty. They're uh, activities that young people are really excited about. But also just because of their inherent creative and expressive nature, I get a lot of young people who are uh, you know are transgendered or who are gay and lesbian coming to my classes. You know, because it's a safe space for them to to express themselves and to explore their identity, and that's you know it's really exciting having them come and being able to you know also then work with the, you know work with their parents and families and communities to give them support. What are some of the biggest things that you've taken out of uh, working with the youth? Uh, you know. I, I, I guess, you know, for me, it's about, you know, being, able to, being stepping up and being, you know, a role model, you know, role model to them and then identifying other people in the um, com community who, who can also provide them support. So I've been working with a lot of uh, Indigenous sister girls and brother boys and getting them to sort of step up so they can be role models for their community as well. Cool. Thank you so much for that, Star Lady, for sharing that with us. Hey, we've got more of Queer Young Thing coming up in a tick, and we might even have some of our panel of elders sitting with us. All that and more. Welcome back to Queer Young Thing. Unfortunately, I have lost my accordion due to budgeting reasons. It was just a lease. We, we couldn't keep it for the whole episode. But we're still here with our uh, young youth uh, talking all things about transitioning. And we've been lucky enough to be joined by a panel of experts from the likes of uh, Yako Erasmus, a psychiatrist who works with transitioning people. We've got Nate Reed from the Gay and Lesbian Switchboard and also Roz Ward from the Safe Schools Coalition. Now, just quickly, uh, uh, Yako, what do you do with the um, with I guess, psychiatry with our transgender people? Well, I suppose it's a range of things. Uh, I, I see about two thirds of my client group are people who are just questioning their gender and wanting to know more information. And then uh, I certainly help people with uh, supporting them during their transition and um, accessing services such as endocrinologists or hormone therapists and preparing them for surgery if that's what they're interested in. Very nice. Now, uh, Nate Reed, we all, I guess most of us here would know the Gay and Lesbian Switchboard. Can you just give us a, like, a rundown of what uh, that service is for? Yeah, so it's a um, telephone um, counselling and referral service for people in Victoria and Tasmania um, who identify within the GLBTIQ spectrum. Um, and you're also a, you also a, a trans, you identify as trans. Yeah, yeah, so yep. I'm also a trans guy. Woo. Yeah, so you're like all encompassing of the uh, GLB, uh, sorry, of the uh, gay and lesbian switchboard. Yeah, yeah. So even though our name is just gay and lesbian, we definitely do not only service that part of the community. And Roswood, you're part of the Safe Schools Coalition, which is a fantastic uh, initiative. Do you want to give us a rundown of what uh, it, what the Safe Schools Coalition does for GLBTI students? Uh, yep. Yeah, well, the quick version is that we basically work with schools to make sure that they are supporting gender and sexual diversity and uh, that can be working with staff to make sure that they're addressing homophobia and transphobia in the school community, working with parents and working with students and 
um, in the area of supporting gender diversity and uh, transgender students. We particularly work with schools to make sure that they're supporting young people who want to transition while they're at school. And uh, that's actually quite a frequent thing that happens in Victoria at least. Um, and we've worked with a number of young people who've transitioned really positively at school. So there's some great success stories, I think, to share about that. Uh, I guess, what are the ages uh, with trans? Uh, how, how, what was like the youngest person that I guess uh, is involved with the school that has um, identified as a transgender? As um, transgender. Well, so far the youngest has been in grade two at, uh, in primary school, and around like uh, there's been young people from grade two through to grade twelve, and each person's experience is different. But um, it's pretty great when you see primary schools supporting a young person to to be the gender that they are, and seeing how their friends respond in a really positive way, and in a way that's kind of more knowing than a lot of adults around them. Um, yep. and more understanding and more able to just be like, of course that's who you are. There's not all these constructs and things getting in the way of just me being friends with you as this person. When I came out the closet when I was about 12, 13, I was in Year 7 at Maguire College. I remember clear as day. First time I, I wore makeup to school. Never again. I got caked up, caked up to max, went to school, extensions, but I was wearing the boy clothes, you know, but I look like, you know, I should have wore a dress or shorts on the top, but oh well. I came out the closet, young, Peg was like, oh, I know, Danny's gay, and I said, yes I am, and I'm proud of it, because I'm sick of hiding in a closet and trying to be somebody that I'm not. I am me, I am gay, I am proud of it. I got teased, got food thrown at me, I got called poofter, faggot, abo, really hurtful stuff. What's the, uh, what's the youngest that, uh, person that you've um, helped transition, uh, Yaku? Um, well, I only see adults from the age of um, 18 and above, right. um, and so there it varies. So I've seen somebody who came to me at the age of 68 wanting to transition, but certainly even people who are presenting late in their 60s would say that from the age of three or four, they knew that something was different, uh, but because of pressures or because of the times they were growing up in, they decided to suppress any thoughts and, um, and only later in life decided to transition. Um, obviously, the transgendered community is a really diverse community, and I know a lot of peop uh, people, trans people, who are wanting to transition, but they don't come from a traditional trans perspective and they're worried when going to see you know their psychiatrist they're not going to be you know accepted how do you deal with the, that sort of situations gosh it's a big problem because uh, trans issues aren't as part of a, a medical curriculum at all so there are many doctors who don't know anything about even what the word trans means um, so that's one of the big problems we face um, my hope is that things will improve over the years um, I'm certainly open to people experience, uh, exploring their own personal uh, journeys and I'm just there to accompany them on the journey. Now Nate, uh, when, uh, when did you first realise that you were of a trans uh, persuasion? Well, I suppose I didn't... Um, hmm, my story is a little bit different. Um, it was about a year ago that I finally, I suppose, had a, a name for what it was. Um, and I suppose growing up I'd always thought that there was something a little bit off but never quite worked out what it was. Um, growing up in a sort of small rural community um, I hadn't sort of really had anything to do with um, trans anything. I hadn't even heard the word transgender until I was about 18 and came to uni. Um, and so, you know, so it's only been sort of a recent thing that I've actually claimed that identity. Um, but it sort of helped cement a lot of things I suppose in the past and you know, and it's a lot easier on reflection to go, oh, that's why I didn't like doing that, and that's why I was, you know, all that sort of stuff. When, when was like, I guess, your earliest memory of ha of um, maybe having a gender identity issue? Um, I suppose about six or seven. Um, when I was, I, I remember I got my hair cut all off um, because it was hot in summer, and I was like, why have I got long hair? Um, and I went to the to the girls bathroom with my sister and someone came in and were like why are you here and I was like oh why am I in here like it was this kind of like 
I don't know, maybe I should be in a different bathroom. Um, but at that, you know, in hindsight, that's, that's what I remember. But. Well, hey, that's fascinating stuff. And we've got more on this topic. Coming up very shortly, you are watching Queer Young Thing. We'll be back in a tick. Welcome back to Queer Young Thing. My name's Dylan. I'm joined by some youthful youths. Uh, we've got Sim, Ashley, and Star Lady, as well as our panel of elders. We have Yeko, uh, Yako, and Nate, and Roz. The, all of these uh, panel of elders have a tremendous amount of experience, specifically around transitioning. Before we get into that, Star Lady, I have a question for you, just um, surrounding, I guess, uh, Trans in different cultures and different terms, do you find that there's much of a shift between, uh, or a cultural shift when it comes to uh, the trans community? There is um, a massive cultural uh, differences in trans communities all around the world, from Papa Pini's in Samoa to, you know, there's American Indian culture that's really ancient. And also we have, you know, here in Australia, um, you know, indigenous brother boys and sister girls. Can you just run us through our brother boys and sister girls, what they are? So it would be, it's a, it's a cultural identity within itself, you know, of people who I'd say identify as trans, but it is very different, you know, culturally, and comes from, you know, in some places within Australia from a really ancient cultural background, but has, you know, spread across the country to other indigenous uh, communities. One of the big things I find about, you know, issues is, you know, a lot of the trans community and, you know, health services don't understand or don't even aren't even aware of sister girl and brother boy cultures and so in the northern territory all those young people and there's a significant amount of them out in remote communities nobody's dealing with their health issues there are no support services they're nothing and in some places it's perceived as new culture and so the communities need you know assistance and those young people need assistance of how to um, move forward and how to support these young people in a modern cultural context and I have a question for you, Yako. Uh, we've been mentioning throughout the show uh, binary gender roles and binary, and binary gender as a term. Could you uh, give some light to any of our viewers that might not be aware of what a binary gender role is? Sure. So, um, so in terms of gender, it, binary refers to that there are only two, two elements to gender. It's male or female. And I suppose what we're realising is that uh, there, gender isn't something that, that can be divided into two and that actually there's a spectrum of, of gender. Um, and so that's what the, the move is towards, um, a rejection of a binary and, and to move towards a spectrum. Sim, did you have a question? I can see you're, you're shuffling <laughs> around there in the front. You should get into it. Uh, I, I do have questions, um, but I have to start it off with a statement. I guess um, I've met literally hundreds of transgender young people and gender diverse young people and people who are trans and gender diverse. I've led, I've leaded um, committees in the trans community and taken a lot of leadership and since we've been taking this collective action and all united we've sort of figured out what are the biggest issues for our community and just uh, for someone who isn't in the trans community, what are some of those big issues? I'd say that the biggest one is poor mental health and there's countless things that are sort of leading to that. Some things could be counted as um, reforms that could be made to government. Some things are issues in culture that's really affecting um, people who aren't fitting stereotypes. Um, some things for trans people is um, people who feel the need for transition who can't afford their surgeries but then again you have to um, often get approved for surgeries and in some states like where Star Lady comes from there is no psychiatrists. Um, some schools in Victoria have joined the Safe School Coalition which Roz is involved with but other states have nothing like that. I felt like my heart's been ripped out of my chest and stepped on with 7 inch heel stilettos. 12 inch to be exact. Became a drug addict and I was cutting myself, picking myself, mentally hurting myself. I finally smelt the roses and came to the realisation that I don't need to do that shit. 
So that's why I went to detox and detox changed me and made me a better person. Sadly, what um, some research captured in 2010 was that one in three sex and gender diverse youth actually attempting suicide, um, which is horrible. Rose, what do you have to say on that matter? Yeah, I mean, I think having some more research about what young people's lives are actually like from their own perspective is really good. And just to give a plug for that, it's going to be called um, From Blues to Rainbows. And it's uh, going to be a nationwide piece of research, so people should look out for that. It's, it's based in La Trobe University. Um, there's so many different things that could happen. I think for me, when we're seeing change happen in schools, um, it, it around gender diversity, it just has to be something that takes the pressure off gender a little bit in schools because it's so intense in so many different ways. Even some practical things that you could do like having gender neutral or unisex toilets in schools, not have so many like boys things and girls things and all of that stuff that just puts people under pressure all the time to kind of conform to very rigid and stereotypical gender roles. Um, I think the more that the government can understand what uh, gender diversity is and transgender is and can support specific um, uh, policy changes and practical changes in health and all of that kind of stuff is really good. The recent changes to the um, uh, uh, some of the Medicare stuff that is now becoming sort of ungendered is a really great step forward. And so I think, I, I think thinking about a whole massive range of ways that you can sort of take the pressure off gender and remove um, gender categories where they're not necessary. And that's probably in a lot of different a lot of different things. Nate, what are your thoughts on, uh, on Sims? Uh, Very essay? small, you know. <laughs> how, do you, how do you change the world? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sum it up, go. Um, <laughs> I think um, it's all about, it's about, I think it's about visibility, which is what you were talking about. And I know that in the recent, like in the last year, I can't count the number of documentaries there's been on trans stuff on ABC and things like that. Um, and I suppose also that shift in terms of um, education for people who are providing mental health support. Um, because there is that whole thing that um, if you are trans, then you're at a higher likelihood of having mental health problems. But they don't necessarily have to be related and they can be separate. Um, a lot of the times they do sort of go hand in hand, but having that, that perspective that just because somebody is depressed and they're trans doesn't mean that they're depressed because they're trans. That's very true. Know. That is very true. And sadly, though, for tonight's episode, we have run out of time. But I would like to say very much thank you to our youth and our panel of elders for leading this discussion. It's an important topic that we need to get onto. You've been watching Queer Young Thing. My name's Dylan, and I'll see you next week. Bye.